Yeah. I didn't tell them all about it. Yes, sir. Well, thanks for coming on this podcast, making some time for us. She's Absolutely. Cheers. I'm not the kind of comedian that has a day job, so I've got nothing going on. Awesome, dude. Me neither. <laughs> that is not a shit talking anyway either. I was just a joke on myself. <laughs> Reflection. Yeah. Is this local? Local? Is this locally sourced rap? Oh, yeah. It's from Houston. Oh, okay, okay. Chopped and screwed. Have you heard of that? Yeah, that's, yeah of course. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's weird... Hearing this kind of rap chopped and screwed, because like you know, it's to, like again, like you know, I'm stuck in the past with my hip hop. So like, I eventually I figure I'd hear something newer, like you know, chopped and screwed. But like, it's just like it's weird to me. I usually think of like DJ Screw or like fucking SPM chopped and screwed, like not something, not anything new. Like so, it's just kind of weird to me, but like right, interesting. Right. I will say it makes it more tolerable to me, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, chopped and screwed does. Yeah, there's some songs that I'll listen to from my past that just don't sound like right unless they're chopped and screwed. Right, right. Like a couple of the SPM songs. Well, let's see. So let's let's start. Welcome back to Taco Madre Podcast. Uh, like, sub, comment. Help us out. Uh, how dare you? Network dot com. Uh, visit us. Buy some merch. Um, I have today a special guest with me, and of course, my wife and my lovely baby off cam. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> oh, that was a great intro. She ready, man. Uh, and today I have a special guest with me. Like I said, man, a nice comedian. I found you on Instagram. So yes. I want you to introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Greasy Gordo, or you can call me Max or Fat Boy. I call that's him, what people will call me. I call him Gordo. <laughs> All right. Hey, awesome. Oh, that's the cutest little hand clap ever. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Dude, and then how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, Well, give me one second. Yeah. Me too. Uh, I, uh, I never go anywhere without this thing. Even if I'm just going to like the gas station, it like has changed my life. Yeah. I always like, you know, would get like a cup of water and leave it at the edge of my bed at night and it would, you know, the water would just get lukewarm after like 30 minutes. Yeah. But this thing just, it's just like 64 ounces of cold water all day, every day. It's Absolutely. awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, I got stoned before I came here. What did you ask me? I I, uh, I do that a lot. No, it's, that's great. Uh, so uh, I asked you, how long have you been doing comedy? I, I, I've been writing comedy since i want to say like 2015 and i just started um doing stand-up this january sorry was yeah this january and uh, people ask me like you know why did you start doing like you know why did it take you so long like now i'm 30 you know i'm about to be 31 and i've been talking about doing it for a long time all the people that know me and honestly like it's kind of it's pathetic it's a sad story but like it was it was suicide like i was getting ready to like fucking end everything like literally everything wow and i thought to myself like you know i just i wanted to do that one thing that i always wanted to do and it was comedy because i was afraid and i said to myself like you know if if you still want to fucking kill yourself afterwards like you know then you deserve to die and i didn't want to I felt like and this is crazy because like I used to I used to sell weed. And there's no bugs in this house, right? Nope. Okay. Because this there's is no a really either. nice house. I don't expect to see any of the classic bugs. No, this is a fucking dope ass house. But I, I meant like the FBI bugs. But no, um, I, I used to sell weed, and one time I sold uh, about five pounds of weed in one day, and I was like sitting in front of like a mountain of cash that equivocated to like. 20 grand or something like that and i just i came in my pants like instantly yeah it was just like whoa and like that i got that exact same feeling whenever i stepped off the stage doing comedy for the first time really? and people were like how do you how did you feel i was like that's how i felt and they were like is that a joke i was like no that's really how i fucking felt <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, no that's, <laughs> that's what saved me from fucking blowing my brains out literally yeah. but what sucks is that like whenever you get off stage you walk right back into that fucking shit that like you know like and it just it fuels my comedy really? like you know living the life that got me to that fucking point like you know just helps me create and just make more so like you know as morbid as i am like it helps me so uh, at what and, at what age were you th- contemplating suicide shit uh like i think like around eight or nine Eight or nine years old. Yeah, I've lived a very fucked up life. Where are you from? I'm originally from Victoria, Texas. 
That's South the, Texas. Yeah, the only cool things to ever come out of Victoria, Texas are Stone Cold Steve Austin, the mm-hmm, wrestler, mm-hmm. and me. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. it. A couple of like, you know, like low level NFL players and shit because we was like jocks like that run the town kind of. Oh, really? But like, you know, other than that, no. It's not a, much it, comes out of there. It's a football town, right? Yeah. Really? They uh, spent an insane amount of money on their, um, football their football stadium. Yeah, I remember specifically we only had... Um, coca-cola products at our high schools and stuff like that because coca sorry coca-cola paid for the uh the turf the astro turf that was on our football field oh, okay. which was just an insane amount of money because it was like the state-of-the-art football shit or whatever so they were like we'll pay for it for free but only coca-cola products and fuck these kids with diabetes for like oh, the yeah. next 20 years absolutely so yeah big football big on football but that's where i'm originally from Shout out to Victoria, Texas. Yo. Shout out to Coca-Cola. You guys are destroying Mexico with one Coke at a time. <laughs> but that's not as bad as Pepsi C. You guys remember that? Pepsi C? Pepsi C. It was uh, Pepsi specifically targeted towards Mexicans and Hispanics. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't you remember Shakira? that shit? Wasn't, wasn't Shakira no, no, behind no, no. it? I, so, I think she was in the commercials. I think she was in the commercials. Pepsi C. And that's where she got him was all the Mexicans Early seeing 2000s. the ass shaking. I think so, yeah. Yep. But yeah. Everybody, everybody knows that. Uh, if you just well, I like to call that era the 9-11 era. The 9-11 era. Yeah, the yeah. 9-11 era. Where, where shit was kind of fuzzy back then. Like, mm-hmm. you could get away with a lot more shit. That's the man show existed then. Yeah. You know about the man show? Yeah, absolutely. Before Jimmy Kimmel got, Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, got a hold of, uh, what was that shit, when they cut your balls off? Castration. Castration. Yeah, yeah. they cut his nuts off. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, those clips of him uh, in blackface still come up. No, I haven't seen that shit. You haven't seen the blackface? No, I haven't. Jimmy That's Kimmel? one of the things we can talk about if you want tonight. But yeah. yeah, no, I did not know that. Yeah, he came out as Shaquille O'Neal in blackface <laughs> playing See, basketball. See, that's, that's yeah. funny to me, man. Like, I don't know. I guess it's because I'm not black. But like, you know, I wouldn't care if they were like fucking doing brown face. You know, that's just me. To me, it's just like, yeah. you know, like uh, fucking Robert Downey Jr. did like, you know, blackface for, for Tropic Thunder. And I don't know, like, oh, you know, yeah, only a yeah. certain oh, amount of people yeah. got pissed off. And I remember s- there were a lot of, like, black comedians that actually that liked funny. it. They were like, that shit's yeah. funny. And he almost looked naturally black. Like, yeah. you know, it didn't That's look true. like racist fucking all black paint yeah. on him. No, you know? right. It wasn't like red lips yeah. uh, and black, like, tar paint. But you know what? That that That's a good point. That role was... Uh, amazing like he fit that role so good yeah. like i wouldn't change anything about it mm-hmm. you know what i mean and a lot of black people like don't mind that role either they're like he did it right so i'm saying if you do it if you're gonna do it do it right and jimmy kimmel back then he did it kind of right but it just been <laughs> resurfacing it resurfacing but it's uh it's so on. funny dude i didn't know that that'd be funny if fucking jimmy kimmel got canceled and then had to go back to like shit comedy that like you know he he can't do anymore like that'd be great no no as horrible Kimmel, as that is like you know he's uncancelable because look doesn't he have like a um, a Mexican uh, puppet next to him remember that Guillermo dude no I don't remember that <laughs> you don't you don't know about Guillermo uh-uh. she remembers yes he's on there out Guillermo and then uh, Jimmy Kimmel. So he switched from uh, doing blackface to just having like a, uh, uh, you know, like kind of like a Mexican, uh, what would you call him? Oh, you mean the host? He, is he a host? Yeah. Oh, I thought his host was uh, somebody else. He puts him out on the street to go ask like dumb shit. and. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's fucking funny. He did the same thing with his son on the man show. Like, he would give his son lines of, like, really fucked up things to say to women and stuff like that. Like, you know, I fuck, he's, we got a shirt that says, I fuck on the first date. And walking up to women, we're like, do you, do you uh, give head on the first date? But it's like a t- fat-ass 10-year-old asking. And I didn't know for the longest time that was Jimmy Kimmel's son. What the hell? So he reappropriated that idea and started giving it to this guy, I guess. Yeah. So funny. Well, yeah. He said, he said, you know what? I can't do it to children. I can do it to this fat Mexican dude. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of Andy Milanakis. Milanakis. He's yeah. one of my favorite comedians, actually. I fucking love that yeah, guy. Really? I would love right? to meet him. Yeah. Well, what, what was that? Is he still active? Is uh, still I, I don't active? know what exactly he does, but I know he uh, he streams a lot. He does Twitch streaming. Oh, really? Yeah, I think whenever like um, something like awkward happens to him because you know they think he's young, or sometimes he gets mistaken for a woman, or somebody will get <laughs> fucking mad at something that he does, and he'll just start a stream and just start fucking with him. That's hysterical. And that, you know, the, the, other than that, I don't know, but I would I would love to like do comedy with that dude or just meet him. But yeah, that's awesome. 
awesome. That's awesome. Have you met any famous comedians yet? Um, technically, I met Will Smith. What? But that was whenever I was in high school. No way. Uh, he came out to. Uh, I went to Lake Highlands whenever I moved to Dallas. Oh yeah. And um, Will Smith came out to uh, to Lake Highlands with Tony Romo for a promo for um, Seven Pounds. That movie Seven Pounds he did. And there was like a bunch of rumors that like a bunch of people were coming to our school, like so and so and so and so. And then someone like, you know, along the rumors said it was uh, Will Smith and Tony Romo. And they're like, whatever. And then like after the pep rally, like in walks Tony Romo and Will Smith and everyone just loses their shit. But like I had already met him like before that point. Yeah. Like I was going to a, uh, a class off campus that did two hours at a hotel to do hospitality. And I guess like, you know, his tour bus, like, you know, was already in the, in the parking lot and I saw him walk out and I was like, is that who I fucking get? By that time I'd already heard like who was going to be like, you know, and I was like, holy shit, it is Will Smith. And I walked up to him and I was like, how you doing? Like, you know, what's, you know, what's, what are you doing? I was playing stupid, but like, you know, I just, I got to say hi and stuff like that. So technically, yes. Was he nice to you? No, no, he didn't slap me. (laughs) No, no, that would have been cool though. Yeah, dude. Nah, I would have sued the shit out of you. <laughs> um, no, dude. Well, that's awesome. And then, so you've been doing comedy, uh, stand up. Uh, you, you, what, what came out? Like, um, how did your love of writing come out? Um, my love of writing came out whenever uh, I was a kid. There was a, a big issue with, uh, I guess, illiteracy. So like uh, among dur- Hispanic children, illiteracy is a uh, hot topic. Um, during uh, whenever I was younger, uh, it was uh, the toss test, tax, and now it's star test or whatever. Toss. Like you know those uh, those uh, those uh, reading like not the reading test, but like the academic level tests and stuff like that. If you don't pass, you don't go to the next class or Absolutely. whatever. Absolutely. But if you mark and, C um, all the way down, you you'll fucking pass seventy five percent. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, the fucking teacher just gave you the fucking answer. They were like, "Just mark down C, and you'll fucking be good." <laughs> See again, like I'm, I'm drinking, I'm smoking. I forgot, like I, I veered off. What was the point of that? No problem. I'm here to get you back on there. Thank you. Uh, so um, your love of writing. Oh it's, yeah. It's so me. like whenever <laughs> I'm so sorry. I see fish brain man. Um, whenever uh, we would have those tests, like we would have uh, a hardcore like uh, story to write. Like there would be oh, like, you know, right. you would have to write like, You're you know, right. like a two or three page story that's on like, right. you know, whatever, like, you know, um, plot like they give you, they give you a couple plots or whatever. And those, that was like my favorite part because like this shit would just come to me naturally, like just like a, a, a scene in my head or like dialogue. Your imagination and was so it, good. Yes, literally. Like I had just vivid imagination and it would flow out like through my pen. I had horrible penmanship. And punctuation, I, I, that was like the worst part. Was like I got I got seventies because of how shitty was r- written. But like I, I got like uh, uh, recommendations or like you know commendations or comments and whatnot for like you know how insane the story was. But like I couldn't just write it well. Like you know, there's bad penmanship. Bad. I couldn't write for sh- like chicken shit writing. Like you know. But yeah, I had a good mind. Dude. But like you know, that's like you know, that's what started it. Was like I just always had friends tell me like you know you're funny. Like yeah, that's how it starts. You got friends that are telling you you're funny. Were you a class clown in uh, school? Or? Definitely. Oh. Yeah, I, I was one of those kids that I was one of those fat kids that needed to be that person. Yeah, yeah. Just because I felt that it was necessary. So yeah, I fucked up around a lot and like you know did some stupid ass shit for sure, one hundred percent. Let's see. And growing up in South Texas, I mean, was that a little difficult? Um. Like, because when I hear of South Texas, I hear, I kind of like, you know, hear a little bit of poverty going down there, a lot of crime going down there. What? Uh, yeah. How, how I was mean, your childhood growing up? My, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I mean, you know, I, t- I feel like I turned out okay. Com- yeah, compared yeah. to like a lot of people that I knew from school, yeah, yeah. I turned out very well. Absolutely. Like there's a lot of people that, that I know that went to prison. They fucking died. Like this dude like got yeah, into it. Yeah. I mean, this dude that we all know and loved. Got into a uh, drunken game of Russian roulette, right. and he won. He fucking won. And when it happened, people were like, "No, no way!" And they were like, "Yeah, he really did." And I was just like, "Damn!" Like he was that stupid. Wow. And um, yeah, there's just like there's. It was very um, interesting growing up in South Texas, and I lived there until I was 16, and I moved up to Dallas like three quarters of the way into my junior year of high school. Why'd you make the move? 
Um, because I fucking hated my fat cunt of a stepmom. Yeah, really? I absolutely hated her. Why? Yeah. She was fucking bad well, she, to you? She went out of her way to make sure that um, I felt uncomfortable where I was living. That's fucked up. Yeah, like, and it was, like, really fucked up because, like, I was, like, I don't know, like, I was 13, 14, 15, 16 at the time. Like, and... I had to be bested by, you know, a woman in her in her early or late 30s, like whatever, because I didn't fit the cookie cutter lifestyle that was in her head. She's white. She had a black son. And then my dad was the Hispanic dad. There was no room for like, you know, a fat little turd like me. And that's what she saw me as. Wow. What a piece of shit. Yeah. And like she went out of her way to me. And I'm not even that is the thing is like, I wish I was making this up. But like this all has like generated into a very awkward like relationship between me and my father. Mm. That's why I'm speaking so ill of this woman, and I hope she fucking sees this one day because I fucking hate her. Really? I hate her. I hate her so much. But like, my mom is trying to get me to understand that you know that energy creates that kind of energy. Sure. So like you know, as much as I hate her, like yeah. you know, there's a part of me in the back of my mind that appreciates that she's sticking around by my dad. Yeah. Oh, you because know, so he's getting a little bit older, older right now, yeah. yeah so she really loves my dad, and I appreciate that. But God damn it, like you know, just horrible brute of a woman. <laughs> just think of her as the lady that takes care of your dad. That's it. I, I honestly picture her like uh, fucking uh, Kathy Bates in that in that uh, s- that Stephen King movie where like uh, she traps her favorite author <laughs> and she's like breaks his legs and shit and like keeps him there. Like that's what's in my fucking yes. mind because of this bitch, yes. fucking bitch. You just fucking Savage bitch. That's a great fucking scene, by the way. It is intense, yeah. Uh, please check it out when you get a chance. Um, okay, so sorry, then, I veer off a lot. No, man, no, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a little bit of a you know troublesome background. So then you move to Dallas, and then what's Dallas like once you get here? Where where you where you uh, land? What what was it? Where do you land? Oh, uh, I was at uh, Skillman in six thirty five. Uh, okay, so pretty much the ghetto. My mom didn't decide to tell me until like the day after I moved in that she had been like broken into like three times already. Yep. And the last time she was exceptionally pissed off because they didn't just get like, you know, the TV she had just got, <laughs> the computer she had fucking stole from work. Wow. Because she was like in corporate America at the time. Hell yeah. And, uh, but all this shit, but they also stole her food and her clothes. Man, they got her for food? everything, Damn. like Damn. fucking everything, dude. Damn. And Damn. like, what sucks food. is that she had my brother with her at the time, and like, at the time he was probably I was sixteen, he was six. Wow. So she had a six year old to feed, and like, you know, thank you know, thankfully, like my mom has always been like financially responsible. Great. So when that stuff happened, she was able to like you know recuperate pretty yeah. well and quickly. Yeah. But like. She didn't tell me like until I moved there, and I was like, "Cool, man! Like, you know, this is like a little slice of heaven." (laughs) You know, I always like whenever, and it's funny too because like in Victoria, I always grew up like the typical pussy like Hispanic meaning that I always saw those kids going off and like doing dumb shit and was like oh, I want to go I want to go but like you know my dad's gonna fucking beat my ass yeah, absolutely I don't, even, so, I don't know like, that's pussy I just think to that's, me like, like you know that's that's what and maybe that's the the culture from like South Texas and North Texas absolutely. it was like yeah. I was growing up to believe that that was a pussy it was right there it was like you know not going and doing that shit yeah. you're not you know fucked up. you're not yeah. playing Russian roulette with us exactly <laughs> fucking exactly Exactly. Like, and I, I'm a, yeah, I'm a pussy because of that shit. But um, yeah, um, it's it's it, that's just a testament to how like toxic like the the male to male masculinity is out there. Like you know, and I don't like I don't know the true comparison, but like you know, there, to me, there's like a lot of difference. Like you know, to the, out there than up here, there really is. So you grew up like um, uh, you mentioned that you grew up not knowing like Spanish, right? Definitely did not know Spanish, and I still don't know Spanish. But your mom knew Spanish. Oh yeah, your dad knows Spanish. Mm-hmm. My dad and my mom know Spanish. But they just kept you away from it. Yeah, my dad. I think it was just because like you know he was lazy. <laughs> but my mom, it was because like she didn't want to uh, get, uh, let me know that she was talking shit about my dad because oh, okay. she fucking hated my dad and she was always saying horrible things about my dad. That's actually and a good reason, actually. Instead of like teaching me Spanish yeah, and setting me up for a fantastic biling- bilingual future, yeah. Yeah. there's so many jobs I had to pass up because I wasn't fucking bilingual. Damn. Fuck me over, but like, you know, if I can talk shit about my kid's dad like yeah. all day, every day. <laughs> And, so, and it, I happened to notice, like, you know, it was always around my aunts. 
You know, because that was all they were the only people that were around. Like, you know, just talking shit about my dad to my to my aunts and stuff like that. But no, I don't know Spanish. I actually learned more working in kitchens and working with Mexicans and shit like that That's than I did by Spanish. my fucking family. That's where anybody you know, like Spanish. there were some Mexicans that worked on the line that like I they didn't know any English, so I had to like use Google Translate and like you know, or I had to like oh, just wow. do like a. So- horribly structured unfragmented and fragmented <laughs> sentence in spanish yeah. that like is just made hardly any sense half sign language the worst part the worst one ever was like i was working at the statler i was telling you about and i had to park down by uh it was it's called the uh the homeless the homeless highway something like that around there there's just like this crazy like a homeless infested area yeah. and i don't mean that in a bad way but like you know it's just they'll, they'll rob you in that area yeah, yeah. and i was telling this dude like hey I, I, can you give me a ride to my car like i don't want to walk by the homeless people and get stabbed and he's like no 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 because i could i couldn't get it out right i couldn't oh, fucking yeah. tell him you know i was just like scrambling because like they're about to kick us all out of the kitchen and like they're just like one block away it was like one block away from fucking fifth element shit and i was like no but yeah no it was pretty bad like i had to convince him like in like five seconds that i won't kill him i won't touch his wiener and that i'm not gonna steal his car i just want to ride to my car but i find uh, like I, I bumped it what was really shameful about that was like our gm was a white dude who had to tell him in Spanish that what I wanted, oh, that was wow. painful. That was fucking painful, yeah. And he was, and he did the whole, like, you know, white, uh, like, um, accent, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was fucking funny. <laughs> oh, man, poor guy. But you know what? I'm glad he helped you out, uh, and you were able to not get raped that night. No. Let's see. So what about... Um, so then you land here, and then uh, you do a little bit of moving around here in Dallas? Uh, then, quite a bit, yeah. Really? I, I've lived everywhere and in, why, in why DFW. That? Um, that was because, um, again, I don't know if I said it during the podcast earlier, but I fucked a lot of fat white girls, mm-hmm. a lot of them. And, uh, what does I that have to do with anything? Right. Like that's, that's eventually how I moved out of my mom's house for the first time. Yeah. If anything, if you're starting to fuck a white girl, you should be moving up in life. Right. But n- not, not with me because what? I just, I made horrible decisions. Fuck. They're just horrible decisions. And, uh, like one day, like I just stopped going home. And I just I started living with this with this chubby white chick in Dallas, and my mom tracked me down because like down the street from where we lived, we lived off of uh, Haskell in Fair Park, and uh, right wow, right across right the, in South Dallas, yeah, right across the street from us, there was this dope ass uh, taco place that sold uh, gorditas with like the best fucking barbacoa I've ever had, wow. and my mom was still like attached to my bank account, and she like caught me and ambushed me at this fucking Mexican spot one day. She's like, where the fuck have you been? I was like, oh, oh God. Yeah. I had a hangover. I was stoned. And like, I was just trying to get my fucking food. And I was just like, oh, my God, I don't need this shit right now. And she was just like, I'm getting ready to throw you out. And I was like, if you can't fucking tell, I left already. Uh, yeah. And that was probably like the best feeling in the world was telling my mom right as she was threatening to kick me out. Yeah, like, yeah. fuck you. I just moved out. Like, what are you talking about? I- I've been out. <laughs> But like it, it took me so long to get to that point. I'm pathetic. I am truly pathetic as a human being. That's that's my story. Is I'm just a fat, lazy piece of shit who's no, been dude. lucky. Yeah, man. Me too. Uh, <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs>